Hello there, Internet. Steve here again with another Unity Asset Store review. Today we are going to be looking at the Modular Prison Pack by Gabro Media. I hope I'm saying that right, and if I'm not, I apologize. Uh, at the time of recording this, this asset uh, retails for $85 USD. Um, and, uh, well, yeah. So this particular asset runs for $85 USD, and you'll see why I'm saying that in just a minute. Um, so let's go over my ratings, rating overviews here. Uh, first thing is quality. Um, so I'm running this on the built-in rendering pipeline. This particular asset also supports URP, um, but I'm running it on built-in. And you know, I gotta say, on built-in, it looks pretty good. Um, so it definitely passes there. Uh, modularity and workability, 100% passes. Uh, they did a lot of really smart modularization with this asset. Um, so yeah, 100, 100%. Um, support and serviceability. The developer does respond uh, to questions, which is good. Um, I have, uh, so yeah, they, they, they definitely respond. Um, as far as setup is concerned, so this goes into serviceability, I had to uh, import a dependency, which I, that's a red flag for me. I mean, I don't like dependencies um, on any asset that I'm gonna spend money on, especially any decent amount of money, because if you think about it, if the dependency stops being you know, supported or whatever, then this asset also stops being supported. Now, in this case, the dependency is one that is supported by Unity, but it also has not been updated by Unity since 2019. So, you know, be that, you know, take that for what you will, I guess. Um, so the dependency is a red flag. I also had to do a little bit of dicking around. Um, for most of it, they give a pretty good uh, explanation on what you have to do. Um, literally right in the canvas of the demo scene. Um, but you also have to delete a couple of scripts. I, I had to do that and because it was still throwing errors even after I followed all of their instructions. So that that just was what it was. Um, so uh, that all being said, um, serviceability, oh, I'll mention this as well because this goes into serviceability and value. Um, this particular asset the one that I'm running in built-in, to get HDRP, you have to buy a separate asset at another $85. Um, that to me just feels icky. I don't like it when developers do that, and I would much prefer a developer to, um, um, to you know, just maybe up the price if you need the extra money up it to like a hundred dollars or something or 110 dollars 115 dollars whatever and um support all three rendering pipelines i know it's a pain in the ass but uh it's going to go a lot farther i think when people are making the decision i mean there are some projects that you know 100 percent is going to be a specific rendering pipeline but there are plenty of other ones that you don't and you may have to change your rendering pipeline down the road and uh, to have to spend another $85 if you're changing the pipeline, a uh, total of 170 bucks if you look at the worst case scenario, that value I find hard to swallow for you know even as good as this asset is. Um, so I'm gonna put that all into support and serviceability and I'm gonna give it a a fail on support and serviceability just because it has really three red flags against it in that category. Um, but as far as value is concerned, it, it, look, if you know what pipeline you're going to use, hands down, there's no question about it at all whatsoever. Um, you have done your due diligence and you've, you know, removed all doubt and complexity from your, you know, planning then by all means, uh, you know, um, you probably know which pipeline you're gonna, like is gonna be the final pipeline and you're good to go. If that's the case, uh, I actually think that this is an underpriced asset at $85. I, I think they could have easily gotten away with a hundred bucks. Um, 
because the amount of stuff you get, I think the total was something like 478 prefabs or something. And the intelligent way that it's modularized, 100% worth it. Um, so I guess just take that into account when you're considering this. Um, I think if that's the case, the value passes 100%. But yeah, I guess just take all that into account when you're considering this um, and uh, we'll go into the demo scene here in just a bit. I'll see everyone there. Alrighty, and we are here in the demo scene. Uh, so just like always, I just drop my character controller in and push play. Uh, I did have to clean up a little bit of... Um, a little bit of nonsense with the canvas because uh, there was a, there's a um, like a tutorial reminder or whatever for the asset in the canvas of the demo scene so I did have to delete that out but aside from that I didn't really have to do a whole lot um, or really didn't have to do anything rather to uh, be able to just push play and go uh, I'm not going to run around the whole exterior of this, um, but you can see that there, you can kind of see what's on the perimeter there. I'm going to hop in here. Um, so there's a handful of admin rooms and stuff. Um, there's some more upstairs that we'll go into in a little bit. Uh, so sort of a locker area. There's actually a couple locker areas. Um, you'll notice that as I'm opening and closing doors uh, that the character controller is sort of leaning. That is because my character controller does leaning. Uh, it's bound to Q and E and to be frank I was just a little bit too lazy to go and change that. <laughs> Uh, but that's why that's happening. Um, actually, we'll go here first. Back out here. We will go upstairs. Yeah, oh, there we go. Come on. So we will go upstairs next. There's another admin uh, area up here. So we have a couple of admin rooms. A briefing room. Sort of the, you know, warden warden's room um i'm going to go out here so juvenile block lots of different wings in this prison um if you watched my if you watched my video on the police station asset then you may remember that I mentioned that I worked in law enforcement for the better part of a decade. Um, I bring that up here, uh, there's control rooms. Um, I bring that up here because I will say this demo scene and just how they modularize things out, I feel like they did a really good job of making it like, like actually realistic. I mean, this is, this is reminiscent of prisons that I have been into to you know do you know prison transports and stuff like that so i actually think they did a really good job on that um so as i'm running through here sort of keep in mind how unique each one of these wings looks in general um and then when we go into the um into the asset manifest scene we'll sort of actually i don't want to go into d block just yet um, we'll go over how they, or why the modularity, rather, is so good. Um, and, like, why I think this particular asset does a good job on that end of things. Um, but all of these uh, admin rooms and these command and, these command and control rooms, um, they, 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 have, they have uniqueness to them. And I think that they just did a really, really solid job on that uh, with the modularity. Um, so we have sort of a, a general hub here that connects all of the uh, blocks together. Um, 
C block. What's D block? I don't want to go there yet. <laughs> we'll go to C block. Where's C block? We have so this is the shower room that we looked at from the upper hand area. Showers and toilets. Uh, ooh. So yard, basketball hoops are in this. Yeah, basketball hoops are in this one. Um, there's a couple of different workout equipment options. Um, there's here C. <laughs> Actually, no, this is corridor C. This must be cell block C. Let's see. Hopefully. Yeah, cell block C. So the reason I want to come in here is to show, so this is a four-tiered uh, room. So there's four levels in this room, whereas some of the other ones are single levels, some of the other ones are doubles and triples. Uh, so it's important to understand with this, with the way they did the modularity, you can build out not only horizontally, but also vertically. I'll just open that door. <laughs> um, so you can also build out vertically, which is important. Uh, so again, like very lots of variants in the control rooms. You have kitchen areas, um, which, you know, you need you need the commissary areas uh, in a um, in a uh, uh, you know asset pack like this. So we have visitation, and then this is the prisoner side of visitation, and then go over to the visitors side of visitation, and then uh, so another you know yard area. Um, Could have gone that way, couldn't I have? Uh, we'll do this. See if we can do this. <laughs> so slide out here, and then we're in the visitation area for actual visitors. So that's the side that we were on before. Um, and then if we go over here. Some more administrative stuff. Hop out here, and then we will be back where we originally came in. So there's that helipad. Here's that door that I opened originally, even though it's closed again. And that is the end of the demo scene. So next we'll hop into the asset manifest scene that I created because it did not come with an asset manifest scene. But um, I did create one, and we'll go through that and go over some of the higher level set pieces and uh, then we'll go over my final thoughts. So I will see everyone in the asset manifest scene. Alrighty, we are back in now in the asset manifest. Like I mentioned, I had to make the asset manifest scene myself. So there's gonna be some duplicates and stuff like that. You might see um, it did not come with one. Uh, but I did try to batch them out into how they're set up in the actual, you know, project, um, project inspector. So uh, we're going to go through some of these, you know, categories quicker than others. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's just dive right into that. Uh, the decals are pretty self-explanatory, except for this one is a road stripe. I'm not going to really like go over that in too great of detail. Uh, go to the documents. So these are signage and actual document clutter. Um, I'm actually really happy with the amount of things that are in this one. Um, there are there are a lot of different signs. There are books that are batched and individual um, and just a lot of different, you know, you know, a decent amount of actual documents themselves. So that I think is, is, is good. Um, a few different, you know, book options. Um, so let's go over to the props two section. There are going to be a lot of duplicates in this one, so I do apologize about that. This in, this is CCTVs and lighting, and for some reason one door. Uh, but so you've got CCTV monitors, uh, both you know ceiling mounted and table and wall mounted. Um, you got again one door. Uh, you have uh, CCTV cluster. Uh, no. So this is a normal um, fixed CCTV. 
uh, and then some fire exits, bunch of lighting options. You've got CCTV clusters like right here. Um, and that, I think, everything else is a duplicate. Yeah, everything is duplicate. Uh, there are not, from what I could see, any what would be referred to as PTZ or pan tilt, pan tilt zoom cameras. So that's a little unfortunate, but that is what it is. So uh, now we're going to be going into some of the larger props and stuff like that. Um, when I mentioned earlier to be watching in that manifest scene, or not manifest, the uh, demo scene to sort of see how they, how some of this stuff was, um, you know, or how some of the modularization was reused in creative and intelligent ways. This is what I was talking about. So a lot of these things um, are um, used in a lot of different ways in that demo scene to be able to create, uh, you know, more unique looking things. Um, so I, I do think the way that they modularized that stuff is incredibly smart. Um, and I do like the way that they modularized a lot of stuff. Some of this stuff does not have interiors, which is unfortunate. But then some things like uh, dumpster does not, the, the, the locker does not, unfortunately. Um, where is, where is it? I know... I know one of these, is this the one? Yeah, no, that's not the one. <laughs> one of these things does. Uh, oh, here we go, I, I already pulled it out. <laughs> so the, file ca the filing cabinet does have interiors, you can pull those guys out. Um, but, but some of the stuff that you would think would have interiors, like this locker system, does not, which is unfortunate. Uh, like I said, the kitchen stuff does not, the desks, um, do not, I believe, I believe that, yeah, it's just a lot. So the, de the desk does not, um, yeah, I don't think any of the desks do actually. Let's see, is this one? No, those are just lots. So uh, more of the stuff that then does not, or more of the stuff does not have interiors, like the actual props like this does not have interiors you could like put stuff in and have the player interact with than does. But there are ways around that that you can fake that in engine in game as well um, so there's little pieces of clutter stuff like that which is nice to see um, you've got all of your in cell in cell not in cell but you know in the individual cells um the you know toy uh, the sinks and you got the toilets over here uh the beds and stuff like that so all that stuff is in here um, you've got all this stuff modularized out. I don't remember. I don't think. Okay, yeah. So these guys are. So these guys are. This the large lockers are actually modularized, which is nice. Um, cubby areas. This does not have an interior. Um, this guy I do not believe does. Yeah, it does not. Uh, so you've got your kitchenette stuff. Um, You've got the variants of the infirmary beds that are laying down and upright. Um, so yeah, there's 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 a good amount of um, clutter here. So let's go then to the yeah, let's go to the modules, I guess next. So this is where you're going to be doing a lot of the more modularized building for the exteriors. Um, actually, let's drag that guy over. For the exteriors, and then some of the interiors are in here as well. But if you notice, this is all byproduct of me making the asset manifest scene myself. So, uh, oops. So, drag that guy out there. So if you notice how they've done some of this. Um, there's, oh, that's the same one. Um, actually, this is the same one too. So, um, they've done it in a manner where you can build the, in, the interior slash, or the, the shell of, of the prison relatively easily. Um, so they have the top parts, the actual top edging, uh, roofing air, roofing stuff done in a very smart way, in my opinion. Um, uh, 
let's see. Drag, oh, drag this guy out here. So you've got like some of those floor with piping in them that were on the upper level of the prison. But this, the way they've done this allows you to, like I said, drag, uh, not that guy, this guy. So like I said, be able to build horizontally as well as vertically, right? So that's super, super important. Um, and it allows you to make sure that your um, your roof edging is is all correct and in order as well. Uh, so there's a few different floor variants and stuff like that. Um, floor and ceiling variants. So if you go down here, you'll see that you can see underneath this. You can use a lot of these pieces as ceiling pieces as well. Um, you've got the windowed variants and the barred variants. You've got the interior walls then for the different blocks. Uh, and you've got diff a few different variants for that, a few different options. Oh, that's actually an exterior one. I'll drag that guy up there. You've got a few different options for that. Ugh. So a few different options, windowed options, stuff like that. Um, you know, door options. You've got your visitor area options here. You have the individual pillars um, that gives it flavor, kind of like in that uh, uh, police pack that I did. It just gives it a little bit of extra flavor. Um, so you've got your barbed wire for uh, the you know edges of the actual buildings. So yeah, decent decent variety of modularity. Like, I shouldn't say decent, a good variety of modularity. Like I I actually think. Like I mentioned at the in the ratings area, that they actually did a really good job on the modularity of this. So let's go to um, the ledges. So ledges are the interior ledges for the most part. Um, so you got the walkways, stuff like that, the stairways leading to the walkways, and then the um, actual you know scaffolding and and protection area, the you know guardrails and stuff like that. Um, so you've got a decent variety of those, rounded, non-rounded, I can't talk apparently, decent variety of making your own. Uh, so you've got the straight um, um, guardrail along with a few different floor options for variety, um, or if you're feeling lazy, you have the option to batch. Um, that's just a repeat of the other one. Um, you've got... Uh, uh, you know, alternate railing options and stuff like that. I don't know that I would necessarily use this one all that much. Um, but you have different ledge options and stuff like that, um, which is nice to see. And then you've got the, I should actually drag this out so there's no confusion. So you've got the um, stairwell with the bottom option as well, with the actual landing on it. Uh, a few more, you know, different um, um, floor scaffolding floor pieces so decent amount of ledge options there let's talk about the exteriors so these are the act well most of these are the actual exteriors so these were the walls that were surrounding the actual um, uh, the actual prison so the the exterior walls uh, you have the uh, ability to put these, uh, so you could rotate them, you know, oops. you can rotate them and then slap them on the ends. If you need to have an end piece, it's not really something that's going to happen in the prison, but that's all right. Um, so you have your exterior, hold on. you have your exterior fencing with door and non-door options. You've got your walkways, you've got exterior, uh, um, um, guard, guard railing, uh, stairwells, you have corner pieces for that. You have, uh, you know, straight shot, um, um, pathways, a couple more options for corners and stuff like that. And then, uh, where is it here? So you've got, um, um, you know, the bottom ledge portions, 
Uh, you've got the ability to make um, sort of raised ledges. Um, so a decent amount of exterior solutions for that as well. Uh, so let's go to what they call dividers here. Uh, the dividers are going to be essentially interior dividers. So to make to make those cool rooms that you saw, um, you're going to use some of these for that. Um, so you've got oh, excuse me. So you've got uh, like like this is where I was saying sort of pay attention to how the control rooms and stuff are created because these are how they are these are how they how they were all created so you've got a decent amount a decent variety of those as well um, you've got accent pieces and end caps to be able to put though to be able to use if you have to cap these pieces off because again these are very like these are double-sided in a manner that you know works well in that regard you got your floor pieces for um, you know so for these types of rooms and then you've got your if you want to make your own prison uh, cells you have those um, pieces to use as well um, exterior or would that be that'd be like I guess the raised portion of the guard like going into the guard booth areas um, and then a few more different uh, cell and prison cell and fencing options you've got a few ducts nothing that would be like imsim <laughs> option where you could crawl through because even then they're all you know single faced um, but those are going to be accent pieces uh, I'm not going to go through all of those individually because then we have the pre-made cells so I was right there's three of them there's three different cell solutions um, This guy. <laughs> so and then you've got the ability to make your own, you know, um, um, spacers, if you will, with them. <clears throat> so uh, that is that is the asset manifest. Um, all in all, you know, all things considered, I do think that this pack is worth it. Um, I do think it's worth the money if you know what rendering pipeline you're going to use. If you're unsure, decide that first because it 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 is an investment. If you're going to do, you know, if you don't know which rendering pipeline you're going to use, or if you could use one or the other, um, it can get expensive. But all in all, I do think this is a good asset. I do think it's worth it. I I'll probably use it in a game jam at some point or another down the road. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it for that. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see everybody in the next one.